Okay, so, so uh, an official welcome. My name is uh, Liz Woodham. I'm a member of the Enrich team based in Cambridge in the UK. Uh, and I'm joined by Claire and Charlie and Ems. Um, for most of the afternoon, we'll be uh, in the capable hands, more than capable hands, of Claire and Charlie. Uh, um, and the idea of this event is that we're going to work on some of the latest secondary problems together and think about their potential for um, mathematical thinking in the classroom. Um, we'll be inviting you at various points to contribute using the chat, uh, so please do feel free to do that and don't worry if your contributions are not fully formed thoughts, we, we very much enjoy your emerging thoughts as well. Um, we're very grateful to Trinity College here in Cambridge for uh, giving us funding to run this event. Um, and uh, Ems and I will do our best to um, answer any questions via the chat as we go along as well. So I'm going to pass over to Claire and Charlie. Thank you both. Okay, um, I'll start by sharing screen. So hopefully we should be able to see the Enrich page. Charlie, is that showing? Yes. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, um, I can never remember how to get to the latest feature straight off so I always navigate it via this page. Uh, the secondary teacher feature this time round is more proofs, so a bit like our last feature, but has a bit more of a geometrical feel. Okay, uh, which one should we start on, Charlie? Um, I think circumference angles. Yeah, was... that's a good starting point. Yes. Okay, so this is uh, one of the angle theorems that um, is covered at GCSE, uh, but it's also a chance for students to, to experiment. Um, so we've got a little GeoGebra app, which where they can move the points around and have a look at these two angles. And there's various questions that they, they could um, be thinking about as they are doing this. Um, so Charlie, if I move my, if I move it to there, what do you notice about those two angles? Charlie, you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the angle at the center is, um, seems to be a little bit more than twice the angle of the circumference. Um, can, you, can you move A a little bit so that um, it's an even number at the center? Aha, uh -huh. okay. Um, so now it looks like the angle at the center is exactly double the angle at the circumference. Um, now, I happen to know that that is the case. Uh, so you and I talked a little bit about whether we wanted these numbers to one decimal place or rounded to the nearest whole number. And we decided on this partly um, because I think it might be a useful point of discussion. Um, if the angle, can we go back to uh, what, what it was when we had 135 degrees at the center? So Oof, almost, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it could be quite an interesting point of discussion. Why, um, why are we not getting double or why, what's happening here? And it seems to me that the angle at the sen at the circumference might be something like 67.4, which rounded comes to 67. But when you double 67.4, then you get 134.8, which when rounded to the nearest whole number will give you 135. So, um, interesting, a little bit of a discussion there about whether the angle at the center is double the angle at the circumference or not, and why, why does this happen? And perhaps an opportunity to discuss with students why it is that we tend to do all the rounding at the end rather than during the calculations. Um, but this is sort of a side issue to the main point of this problem, which is, to, reckon, to notice that um, the angle at the center is twice the angle, or to, or to have that conjecture that it looks like the angle at the center seems to be twice the angle um, uh, at the circumference. 
Okay, so once students have had a play with that and have made a conjecture, which they think may or may not be correct, depending on um, how they're feeling about the rounding, we've given them a diagram um, where we're asking them, can they use this diagram to help them prove their findings? And Charlie, I think you're going to do a bit of modelling at this point. Yes. So I need um, to stop sharing. Okay, I'll share. Um, okay, so I've just photocopied the page uh, that Claire was showing us. Um, so I've got the image here and I can imagine, so the image below is coming through. Okay, so um, the conjecture is that the angle here um, at the circumference is half the angle here at the center. Um, and with it, it doesn't require, it, it, Claire was talking about GCSE maths. The, the reason, one of the reasons we thought we'd start with this is that it only requires knowledge about angles that most students uh, cover in, in year seven and year eight. So, um, so for example, uh, I can imagine um, asking students um, um, why they think these two angles um, are marked with a red arc. Um, uh, it indicates that both angles are the same. Why, how do we know that both angles are the same? Um, some discussion about this must be an isosceles triangle. How do we know it's an isosceles triangle? Um, they've both got the radius there. So if we call that angle X, then this angle would be X. What can we tell about the third angle in that triangle? Well, we know the angles in the triangle are up to 180. So this must be 180 minus the two X. Um, but we also know that angles on a straight line are up to 180. So if that's 180 minus two X, then this angle on this side must be two X. Um, and we can use very similar reasoning to think about these two blue angles being on that isosceles, on, an, on the isosceles triangle on the right. So if this is angle Y, that would be angle Y. And this angle here would be 180 minus two Y. And these two angles, uh, uh, add up to 180 because they're on a straight line. So this has got to be 2y. And now we can see that the conjecture um, is indeed correct. This angle here is twice this angle here. The angle at the circumference is x plus y. The angle at the center is 2x plus 2y. Um, so there's an opportunity to use a diagram with students um, and get them to reason like this. But what we also want to show you is that um, following on from what we did in the previous feature, we're wanting to encourage students to lay out their work and their reasoning in a logical manner. So we've got um, a proof sorter. So um, if I stop sharing that, um, do you want to yep. share? Hopefully um, I am. Okay, there we are. So we're back I'll to just the move page. This back over. Yeah. So we've just had um, door. Sorry, uh, we've just had a comment about uh, showing that these are isosceles triangles. So I would expect the students to at least say something about them, the radii being the same, or draw some little marks to show that these are the same. Um, in the problem, we have a link to a proof sorter, and in this, we're trying to model what we think you should show if you're writing out a full proof. So if you're at our webinar last time round, you're listening quite a lot of these, but the idea is that you can move these cards around. Um, there's quite often one that says therefore, which is quite a good one to put at the end. And I'm just going to put them in a random order for now. Perhaps Once you, you could ask, um anybody who's uh, to suggest in the chat which card they might, might go might first start, might they start with yeah. so in the chat can you um 
suggest which one might go first. You don't have to write out the whole card. Uh, since BOC is isosceles. You know, we've got that as a suggestion, um, but somebody else has said let. So let's quite, I'll just put those two at the start. I think out of these two, I prefer the let one first because that is setting up our problem. It's saying what symbols we're going to assign to the angles. So I think I might go for that one first. And since BOC is isosceles next. Yeah, it follows in that and it follows on nicely. Yeah. And there's another since, isn't there? There is. Now, hopefully we have um, put this ordering in as a correct one, because there's always quite a few different orderings that you can make, and we try and program them all in. So we've now got two since triangle is isosceles. Uh, what do we think might come next? It's probably either triangles or straight lines. Okay, we've got somebody who's going for angle sum of a triangle. So I'm going to put those ones next. So since the triangles are isosceles, we know that these two angles are the same. And using the angle sum of a triangle, we can work out the BOC. And this is more or less in the same order that Charlie did it, though Charlie worked on one triangle first and then the other triangle. Uh, but in that case, Claire, shouldn't we have since BOC is isosceles, then using the sum of a triangle, we have BOC equals... Well, uh, are, are we trying to directly copy your method? Ah, okay, no, the, yes. So I think these ones next. So we've set up the problem with X and Y. We've indicated which angles are the same. We've used angle sum of a triangle twice, angle sum of a straight line twice. I am just really hoping that this is an order that we programmed into the proof sorter, because I think this is so far valid. Um, I think somebody suggested X plus Y as the next one. And then this is the last one we think. Charlie, does that all look logically consistent? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly nervous about whether- I, <laughs> I am slightly nervous. We have programmed it to accept variety of possible solutions which we think are logically consistent. So click on submit and see what happens. Oh, ah. Right, okay, we need to order another sequence of um, statements into this problem. Let's try and rearrange it into Charlie's method. I'm going to just write myself a note. So quite often with these proofs, there are lots of different ways in which you can arrange your statements. I think Charlie's proof went along this how does that look okay let's uh, i think i'm more confident now okay submit yeah okay so that one works <laughs> uh, somebody <laughs> said somebody said could we change the lines and triangles around i don't think that one is going to be accepted because if we have I think we need to have the sum of the triangle to show that um, this angle here was 180 minus 2x before we show that, unless we know something about the exterior angle of a triangle, but we would try not to assume more facts about triangles than uh, was strictly necessary. So I don't think this one's going to be allowed because we found these angles by using these ones. But if your students, do know about exterior angles of triangles, they can construct a much quicker proof. Yes, it didn't like that one. Okay, is there anything else you want to say about the proof sorter, apart from we haven't put in all of the options? <laughs> yes, I mean, when we were doing it, we were thinking about um, 
which were the most likely reasonable logical order. So, um, and sort of the neatest, most elegant ones. So, um, yeah. I, I think it possibly makes sense to take one triangle at a time. And I think that's why we went for that one. Yeah. But with all of these, if at any point you find a, um, a proof sequence that works, uh, do please email us and let us know. Um, so a proof sequence that we haven't considered, which you think forms a logical proof, email us and we'll update the proof sorter because as you've seen, we quite often miss a logical proof. Okay, um, if we go ahead back to the problem. So we've talked about proving the result. The really nice thing about this result is once you've prove that one result, you get three more results for free. So without having to do extra um, work. And I have a problem here because I can't say this word, but we can sometimes call these corollaries. Thank you. So that, that it's sort of like a consequence of the theorem. And it's really nice to show students that by doing this one bit of work, we've now got all these extra bits for free. So we've written um, four well, sorry, three different corollaries. Thank you. So the challenge here for students is how can you use what you've just proved, pro, uh, proved to show that this is true? So um, I'll, I'll ask you about the, the first one. So we've got the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. How might you use what we've just uh, proved to show that this is true? Are you asking me or do you want um, people oh, to I was, I was asking people in the chat. Okay. So this is kind of a special case of, of what we've just done. Um, and sometimes people will prove this one first. <clears throat> So somebody, um, Backhouse or Backhouse C has written that the angle at the center is double the angle at the circumference. And because AB is a diameter, the angle at the center, BOA, will be 180 degrees. And so if that's twice the angle at the circumference, the angle at the circumference must be 90. Okay, so that's a, that's a nice direct consequence of what we've just um, shown to be true. I really like your expression that you get these for free. Yes. Um, and um, that, that seems really elegant and efficient and what, um, um, yes, yeah, something that yeah. we strive for whenever possible. Now we've just had a comment that you, you can draw a radius in here, uh, which you can do, and then you can prove this result in exactly the same way that we've already done. But because we have um, proved the more general case, we can just apply it straight without having to reprove it. Okay, um, so- Claire, yep. can you do that again? Draw that extra radius. Mm -hmm. Because th there is a way of doing this as well, which is slightly different to what I did. So in triangle OBC, mm -hmm. you've got an isosceles triangle. So if you want to mm -hmm. mark, so can you mark the two angle X's, for example? And in the other one, you could mark the two angle Y's. Mm -hmm. And the nice way of proving this is that the angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 2x plus 2y add up to 180 degrees. So x plus y must be 90. So. Um, yeah, they, they, they both have, they both have, a, both proofs have, have a place. Um, yes. And this one's quite a nice one to sort of start off with. And yes. then you can say, okay, I, I can prove this one. And that then gives me this one for free. And what I quite like, what I like about, and I think mm -hmm. the reason we've tagged this as 
key stage three and key stage four, so 11 to 16 year olds, is that we're not, even though circle theorems are often done quite late in the GCSE curriculum, all that it requires is knowledge about angles that students learn at quite a young age. So it seems like a good thing to be doing with students quite early on. Okay, um, so if you have a look at the oops, I'm... second corollary. Yes, thank you. I wasn't on mouse, so I wasn't moving down. <laughs> okay, so I think this one's a, a harder circle theorem to prove if you haven't already shown the one that we've just done. Um, but oh, so do you mean you get more for free this time? I think we get you get more for free this time. Okay. So um, I, I think, so this, this circle theorem is that angles in the same segment or angles on the same arc are equal. Um, but I, I think this one's a bit trickier to prove. But now that we've proved angle in the center, we can do this for free. So Charlie, how might you prove this one? Um, I would say that the angle BCA, the one that appears in red um, yep. at the top, is half the angle at the center BOA. Okay, so I also I... know that BDA is half the angle at the center. So, so the no, let's, let's let's go for a bit of Greek. Okay. <laughs> if I call this theta. <laughs> okay then uh, the, the red angle would be half theta. And the blue one would be half theta as well. Yep, and theta is a bad choice because it's hard to draw on a graphics tablet, but there mm. we go. So okay. using the angle at the center is twice angle at the circumference. You've now got the angles in the same segment are equal. Okay, uh, let's should we have a look at our third consequence. Yes. Okay, are there any ways um, that we can use what we've already done to try and prove something about these two angles? Would you like uh, contributions on the chat? Um, should we have some contributions on the chat? Okay. Um, so we've got somebody saying that angles as a point add up to 360, which I agree with. I can't see how to use that just yet. Um, I can stick in some algebra. If it helps. Two double angles. Yeah, I'm going to start by saying BCA is equal to X. Angle center first and the angles at a point. Yeah. Okay, with my BCA equals X, can anybody tell me what a different angle is? in terms of X, BOA, yeah. And we're talking about the obtuse part of BOA. So this is where actually having a, a diagram makes it much easier. Okay, so what else can I do? So I've let BCA equals X, and that gave me the obtuse part of BOA is two X. Jackie has suggested yeah that BDA is equal to Y. Yep. And then the, the reflex angle BOA would be twice Y. Yep. And that's because of what we proved earlier about the angle of the center being twice the angle at the circumference. And you might find that the students um, can, can be a bit uneasy about having it like that, which is where using the um, GeoGebra app at the start to show that this still holds if the angle at the center is obtuse is quite uh, not obtuse reflex is quite useful so that they're sort of used to it being a, a an arrow shape but it does still hold when it's not so this is where Amma's um observation that the angles around the point add up to 360 comes yep. in useful and then we can halve it and get X plus Y equals 180, and they should be degrees. Okay, so just as, as I was saying earlier, it's, it's a good, it's a nice thing to do with your students to show that it doesn't have to be an arrow. You can move to have something like this. 
and it still works. Okay, so anything else wants to talk about this problem? Right at the end, there's uh, a cyclic quadrilateral which stays on one side of the center point. I'm trying to think of the best way of actually uh, describing how that one works. And for this one, you have to be, uh, you have to be slightly um, more careful, I think, Charlie. So is there anything you can tell me about any of these angles at the moment? Well, BCA and B, C dash A will be identical. So I call those X. Um, why is that? Because they're both half the angle at the center there. And so they're half BOA, yes. Yep. Or we could even say from uh, the first consequence. Yes. That those two are the same. Yes. So we and could say. Yes. And then from what you've done earlier, we know that if we had the quadrilateral B, C dash, A, D, the opposite angles would have 180, then it must also be the case for the quadrilateral B, C, A, D. So from consequence three, we have that, and therefore we can combine them. Get this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the first problem that we wanted to talk about. Um, I think it's a really nice one because you've got all of these sort of extra uh, circle theorems that come for free. And I, I the, the mathematician in me likes getting lots of um, results for very little work. Oops, I'm trying to go back to the feature. There we go. So in, in cyclic quadrilaterals proof, we've got an alternative proof of the cyclic quadrilaterals, which is very similar to the angle in the semicircle proof that we looked at a second ago. So you might like to investigate that one as well. Um, I'm trying to remember which, what we said we might have a look at next. I think Pythagoras next. Yes. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay, so we've got quite a few Pythagoras proofs in um, this, this feature, because uh, it's something that, that lots of students uh, meet and use, but might not necessarily have thought about proving. Um, so what we have here is we have actually three methods, and at the bottom we have a link to the fourth method. Okay, so Charlie, what would you like to say about the first method? Well, I don't know whether we were going to, um, maybe there isn't time to give no, we might anybody. Not. Um, okay, I mean, what, tell, tell you what, we could just talk about, um, I'm just trying to, can you just scroll down a bit so I can remi remind myself of what the statements are all about? Okay. There's okay, quite I, a lot of words in this one. Okay, so let's, let's, let's not worry about the proof sorter, yeah. because everyone can go off. But can we go back to the image? And I, okay, so I think what this is all about is to say that um, the area of the blue square is C squared. And... Do we know that it's a square? Sorry, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. But. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Uh, at the start of the proof sorter, we do have a couple of lines, I seem to remember, which um, are there to explain or to justify that, that this is a square. That, the, that is a square. Yeah. Um, so I think. Yeah, so therefore the enclosed quadrilateral is a square. So somewhere in this proof, we work, we work out that that is a square, yeah. which, has, which has to come before we start working out the area of this. Yes. And so the blue square is got an area of C squared and each of the four identical right angle triangles has got an area of half AB. So 
the whole, uh, so all four right angle triangles added up together have an area of 2AB. And so uh, everything together has um, an area of C squared plus 2AB. Um, now we know the area of the whole square will be A plus B all squared. Um, and if we multi if we if we square if, if we work out what a plus b all squared is, we get a squared plus b squared plus two ab, um, and so we have two ab on both sides of the equal sign. So we can um, remove them, and we're left with c squared equals a squared plus b squared, which is um, hopefully uh, well known. Like Pythagorean um, theorem. So it, this, this particular method requires students to uh, know about expanding brackets or squaring A plus B, though Claire was making the point yesterday that actually we do that for them on one of the cards. So even if they've never squared A plus B, um, they could, the, this proof could be accessible um, if they're prepared to accept that a plus b all squared is something other than a squared plus b squared. Um, so yes, so, so this, yeah, so this proof... Um, it's probably the classic Pythagoras theorem yes. proof. It's but this we do like, I always think of. Yeah, but we do like method two, which in a way doesn't require that algebraic manipulation. Yeah, so I think for, for method two, um, we, we kind of still need to know that this is a, a square, so that this area is C squared. But then we can move the triangles about um, to pair them up. And then this length is going to be A, and this length is going to be B. So this area is now A squared, and I apologize for the pen, it's not very visible. I hope that's okay. Yep. So just by moving those triangles around, we can see that the two blue areas, well, the red areas stay the same, the purple areas stay the same, the whole shape stays the same. So therefore the blue areas stay the same. Yep. So I, I think that's quite a neat way of showing it without having to worry about expanding brackets. And at the bottom of this page, there is a video demonstration of um, somebody actually manipulating these pieces around. And so we're going to leave everybody to figure out how method three works, which um, involves a little bit more work. Yeah, um, it, it also involves moving things around. Yeah, um, and labeling. The and labeling, pages. yeah. Um, um, with that one, I think it's, it's quite nice to actually cut out the pieces of paper and actually move them about yourself. It's a bit less obvious how it works. But again, there's another video at the end showing this working. Yeah. Um, the fourth method we thought was so nice, it has its own problem. Um, and this is a method which involves enlargements. So it might be better to, towards the key stage four end of things. And we've, la um, we've labeled it, it's a 14 to 16. Right, 16. And it's a two star problem. Uh, it, it, it's slightly more sophisticated um, reasoning. Um, so you might like to have a look at that one as well. I think that's a, it's a really neat result, which um, I've not seen that proof before. Uh, the last bit on Pythagoras theorem that we've got is a proof of the converse. Um, and the reason we've included this is because um, students are taught about the converse of Pythagoras theorem. They're not, they might not necessarily be um, taught so much that the difference of direction of implication is very important. So can, can we just be clear, Claire? Yes. So, so we've just been proving that when we have a right angle triangle, yeah. the squares on the two shorter side, the area of the squares on the two shorter side equals the square on the hypotenuse. So the converse, just, can you just? Yeah, so we 
as Charlie said, if we have a right angle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The converse is, if for a triangle, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I've lost a squared, so c is going to be the longer side, then it has a right angle. Is it, yeah, is it always the case that, yes. yeah? Or could I possibly um, construct some triangle which obeys this, which is not a right angled triangle. So what we've done here is we, we, we've talked about um, a proof of the converse and it's a, a bit of a uh, proof by contradiction. We've included the proof sorter because it's a little bit uh, trickier this one. And for the first part, we're asking you to prove that angle C cannot be less than 90 degrees. And we've started off by assuming that angle C is less than 90 degrees. Um, there's a proof sorter that leads you through showing that C cannot be less than 90 degrees. And then at the end, we ask the students to, can you go away and write down for yourselves a similar proof to show that C cannot be more than 90 degrees? And if C cannot be less than 90 degrees and C cannot be more than 90 degrees, it's sort of an, an inverse sandwich argument. C must be 90 degrees. Um, is there anything else you want to say about this one? Yeah, so, um, so this is labeled a 14 to 18 for eight, yeah. 14 to 18 year olds. And it's got two stars because it's slightly trickier. But um, um, and many students don't come across proof by contradiction um, until either the end of GCSE or the start of... It's, it's, uh, it's A-level. Yes, yeah. but we thought this was a nice opportunity to introduce it. Um, and we thought that by offering the proof sorter, there was enough sort of scaffolding to make it possible for students to, uh, to engage with the, the kind of reasoning that was involved here. Yeah. And, it, and it's also, as I said, an opportunity to talk about um, if this equals this, if this equals that, does that equal this? And yes. we, we're going to be talking about a bit more about that in the in the next feature. So a bit of a spoiler alert. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Sh shall we spend a few minutes talking about overlap? Yeah. So let me find. Let's go to the right page. Oh, that's a bit slow. Part, part of the reason I'd quite like to spend a couple of minutes here is because it gives us a, an opportunity to mention that there are handouts that accompany the proof sorters in the teacher's resources. So um, we don't have to do it straight away, Claire, but let's let's not forget to, to mention that at the end. Yes, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to just move this red square around. So as the red square moves around, the red square overlaps the blue square by a certain amount. Um, the red square and the blue square are both the same size. And as I move it around, can you in the chat try and tell me how much of the blue square is covered and does it stay the same? So in the chat, is, is this the same area all the time and how much is it? So we've got somebody who suggests it's a maximum of 25%. If you put the red square so that its edges are horizontal and vertical. I'll try, do my best. Uh, okay, so an, that's an example of when it is 25%. And presumably when it's 45 degrees, it would also I shall sort of drawing some lines on there. So that's an example where it is 25%. Um, and then at 45 degrees, let's just get rid of those drawings. So I think at 45 degrees also, if we, if I draw these lines on like this, uh, they're supposed to be straight. So, so in, the, in these two cases, it's it's fairly clear, but it's not so clear when um, when the orientation is slightly different, is it? 
No, so to me, that isn't as obvious. No. So what we've done here, let's clear the drawings. We've thought about four different methods which you could use to show that it is always 25%. Um, and we've hidden them under um, hide and reveal buttons. So each one has a bit of a picture. Um, the first method is talking about rotating the red square round. The second method is talking about congruent triangles. Uh, method three is also congruent triangles. And method four has um, a bit more of an algebraic feel and also some um, areas of rectangles and triangles. Uh, now, as Charlie says, we've got lots of stuff in the teacher's resources. Um, we've got a printout of the four methods. So you can hand this out to students and ask them, can they use the four methods to try and come up with a proof? And what we also have, um, method one is, is kind of a one picture proof and you can just use that one picture to prove it. For method two, method three and method four, we have a selection of pictures. So the students can use the pictures and write out, oh, somebody's written on my board. <laughs> Didn't know we could do that. It's not me. Um, so students can, can have a handout of the, um, of the pictures and then can fill in the words to go with the pictures. Uh, somebody said, I can't find the teacher resource section. Um, if you go to the problem, uh, which is here, I'll just try and put it in here. Uh, so if you go to the problem, at the side here, um, we have a getting started button, which uh, gives students some hints. We have a submit a solution button, but we also have a teacher resources. So that's where you can find these principal work um, sheets. And we've got, we've got uh, these diagram proof sheets for the other two methods as well. And so, so Charlie, what those sheets are doing is, is providing sort of some scaffolding so that students might be able to figure out a logical argument that we've, yeah, um, that seems that will lead to, to, to the conclusion. We don't want to give away the, the result, but um, it, it offers a bit more scaffolding than the first worksheet that Claire showed, which just had the one image. Mm. I suppose it's worth saying for all the proof sorters that we've shown you, there are printable sheets with all the statements because some students may prefer, or you may prefer to give them the handout so they can cut up and play around with, especially if they don't have laptops or tablets to, to play with. And sometimes they may even prefer, it's, it's, it's possibly easier. It's sometimes easier. You, you can group them into groups yeah. in, in your uh, on your table and then work out for the groups how to do it. Um, so for example, for the fir very first problem we looked at today, if we go to teach resources at the side here, then there is uh, these principal cards for sorting may be useful. And there's the principal sort out cards. Now it does mean that everybody has the same um, sequence of statements, um, but also you could talk about which sequences give a good proof, which sequences um, don't follow logically, uh, and that can um, create another class discussion. I'm aware of the time, Claire, yeah, and we cause... promised that we'd get onto quad in quad at 10 2. Yeah. Um, so... so there's there's a couple of uh, 14, well, there's a 14 to 8 problem and a 16 to 18, 18 problem that I particularly wanted to talk about. Uh, so quad in quad is a question about a quadrilateral and what happens if you join together the midpoints of each side. So I'm going to just show the midpoints. So as I move these around in the chat, can you conjecture 
anything about this blue quadrilateral in the middle. Now somebody's looking at the, the area a bit already. So there are two conjectures so far, one about the shape and one about the area. Oh, yeah. yeah, and there are actually two different proofs. But it's, it's the shape one that I particularly want to talk about. So this is another question. Uh, and by the way, you're correct, it is a parallelogram and the area is half. Um, we've got some of these decimals going on again. Um, I think we probably need them in this case. Uh, we've got two proof sorters for this one. The proof sorter for the quadrilateral is a really nice example of how vectors can be immensely powerful and make your life much, much easier. So especially in, um, uh, in key stage four, when students first meet vectors, and I find this a lot in key stage five, uh, vectors are sort of treated with, with a bit of... Um, with a bit of dislike, but it, it, this is such a nice, neat proof um, in a few lines, and you can prove it very, very easily. Um, if you're trying to show that um, a shape is a parallelogram, you basically have a couple of methods you could use. You could show that the two pairs of, power, uh, two pairs of opposite sides are equal in length. That's enough. You could show that the two pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So if you prove two pairs of opposite sides are equal in length, you've done it. If you prove that the two opposite pairs of sides are parallel, you've done it. Um, for both of those, that's not a, a, a very efficient way of doing this question. Um, you also possibly come into some dividing by zero um, problems. The other way to do it, though, is if you can prove that the vectors connecting uh, two sides are equal, if the vectors are equal, it means that the length is equal and it means that the direction is equal. So you only need to show that these two vectors are the same. And that means that the other two have to be the same. So it's a really neat proof, and I would encourage your Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5 students to have a look at that, to try and get a, a bit more love for vectors going on. Claire's um, on a campaign to get yes. everyone to love vectors. It's because I've been supervising vectors and matrices, that's why. Um, the very last problem I wanted to talk about is... Let's just check at the, yes, at the, at the bottom of that, was that, were there links to two different oh yes there's a the shape proof and the area proof proof yeah so there, there are two i wasn't going to talk about the area no 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 it's, it's, it's not it's not well you can see it's, it's a bit longer it's not quite yeah. as neat and again I mean, in the teacher's resources there are downloadable printable cards yeah uh, there you go they're, they're near the top so it's made them a bit easier to uh, find um the very last problem i want to talk about is um, it's it's based on it's based on the sort of classic problem of I'm trying to draw on here and I haven't got a pen of there being um, some C this is meant to be C and somebody here who wants to get to this point on the shore and they can swim they swim slower than they can run across the land and so you'll find that there is some sort of path like this, which is the quickest path to get across. Uh, we've linked to, in the teacher resources, we've linked to a problem uh, like that, uh, which is called where to land, um, which probably needs a new picture at some point. But that's sort of the, the, the classic problem, which is also is about how light rays bend as they pass through different mediums. This question is slightly different because this question is about a swimming pool which is circular. And we've got uh, the film star, Burkloff McLean. It would help if I was actually on the problem rather than the teacher notes. There we go. Uh, we've got the film star, Burkloff McLean, who's on one side of the 
swimming pool and we've got her nice cool refreshing drink on the other side and you've and she, chosen her name after two famous mathematicians haven't you uh well it wasn't me this was a long time before <clears throat> um i had anything to do with step um but yes her, her name was chosen after i've just looked at the date of that and that that's a bit um disturbing okay um but her name was uh, chosen after two famous mathematicians. So basically her, her options are to run all the way around, to swim all the way across, or to, I'm going to try and draw this one in a slightly different pen, or to run part of the way around and then swim across. So it, it needs a bit of a knowledge of arc length. Um, it also needs speed, distance, time, um, it, it is an A-level question, um, but I would encourage any of you with sixth form students to, to get them to have a look at this because it's actually quite a surprising result. Or to me, it's a very surprising result, one that I wasn't expecting. Um, so do have a play with that and um, do let us know how you get on. If you want to submit solutions to this, do feel free. Um, it's a really nice question. Okay, is there anything else you want to talk about in terms, uh, in terms of the latest feature? No, I think we've made the, the points that we wanted to. In particular, um, we hope that the proof sorters and um, give students an opportunity, sort of an introduction to, to proof. Um, it's very difficult for students who've never seen proofs or dealt with to, to appreciate how, sorry, my lights have gone out. <laughs> to, uh, to, you, you need a nice new light like mine, Charlie. So, uh, so we hope that this is quite a good way of introducing students to laying out proofs in a sort of logical way, um, but also introducing them to the idea that there are a variety of ways of doing things. Um, overlap, which has got four different methods, and Pythagoras, which has got a variety of methods, and the six and, laterals. And the also kite that, in a square. Yes. You haven't mentioned kite in a square. You haven't mentioned kite in a square. Many of you may already know kite in a square. So it's the same problem that we had before, but now we have three proof sorters. So we've changed some of the statements in the coordinates one. Uh, yep. The other two have stayed the same, but not only do we have the paper versions, we also have got the proof sorters, the online version. And, and the nice thing about the doing it online is that when you've got all your cards in order, you can then submit and it gives you some feedback. Whereas when you do it on paper, you, you're not very sure whether you've got that in the right order. So perhaps some students, some of you might want to ask your students to do it on paper, before going and doing it uh, online, or they might, or you might just have one computer in the classroom with a whiteboard, and you might get the students to do it on their own, and then um, suggest um, how to do it uh, at the plenary stage. And um, like with circumference angles, we have tried to find all of the possible um, logical orders, but we might have missed one. Um, so if we have missed one, do please let us know. Um, I think there's a lot for the Pythagoras one in particular. Uh, in terms of whether there was anything else we wanted to say, this is quite a short half term. So all these problems that we've been showing you are live problems on site. Uh, for those of you who are new to Enrich, that means that the students can send in solutions, but they don't have, they've only got three more weeks, um, Monday, 21st of March is the day. So three weeks yesterday. Uh, for sending in solutions um, to these problems. So um, do encourage your students to, to do this. Um, other than that, I think we've possibly covered all the ground we were going to cover and managed to finish by five o'clock. <laughs> so I, I will stop sharing now and um, I'll ask Liz to pop back in. Yeah. Thank you very much, Claire and Charlie. Brilliant. Um, I'm just going to round things off with a, a few reminders. Um, so I'm going to share the PowerPoint screen again. I'm hoping that you can see the PowerPoint. Charlie, Claire, could you nod just to indicate that you can see that? Thank you very much, Claire. Um, so uh, we've come to our, the end of our time together, but um, just a reminder, 
that if you uh, would like to follow us on Twitter and you don't already, there's our, our Twitter handle. And you may like to tweet about today's event using that hashtag. If you're not active on Twitter, uh, you may prefer to receive details of our events and keep up to date with us via email. So please do sign up for our email newsletter if, if that suits you better. Um, there are various links here that I'll put up um, which may be of use if you're not so familiar with Enrich. That first one, the uh, secondary curriculum page is sort of the portal for all things linked to the secondary curriculum on Enrich. Um, and today you've heard a tour of the current feature. So that's the newest material on the secondary site. But if you wanted to explore previous features, then that would be the link, that past secondary features link would be the place to go. Um, if you remember a feature is, is, is a group of tasks uh, around a particular theme. The recording, oh, oh no, I've, got, I've jumped ahead of myself. There is a link to our dedicated step resources, which Claire coordinates and creates. Um, and so if you've got uh, uh, students in, in year, well, 12, I guess, who are thinking of applying to, to Cambridge, you might like to take a look at those. And that offers support if, for, for those of them who are required to do the step examination. Um, the recording of today's event will go up on the Enrich site at that page. Um, it, they'll, it'll be up by the end of the week. So do feel free to share it uh, with your colleagues, should you wish. Um, thank you very much for participating so, uh, so um, enthusiastically via the chat. If you did want to save a copy of the chat for yourself, do remember to do that now before we all disappear. Um, you can click on the three dots at the bottom, I believe, and, and save it that way. As I mentioned at the beginning, these webinars are free to you as participants um, because of the generous funding that we receive from Trinity College here in Cambridge. And we'd be really grateful if you could give us your feedback. Um, there's a, a link to the feedback form. Claire, would you mind popping it in the chat? You might have done so already. So um, thank you if you have. We really appreciate your feedback. And of course, that helps us make these events um, as good as they can be uh, and cater to, to your needs. Finally, you may be already wishing that you could sign up for the next Enrich Secondary Live event, and lo and behold, you can. So if you wouldn't mind, Claire, also posting that link, um, if you would like to uh, book already for our next event, which is on Tuesday, the 26th of April, um, same time, then please do. <clears throat> And in the meantime, it just uh, leaves us to say thank you very much for joining us this afternoon and um, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>